We doubt that there are people watching this channel that have never heard about the legendary M1 Abrams, an American MBT that left its mark in dozen, if not hundreds, of combat zones. It has thick armor, impressive firepower, extremely high mobility, and bleeding-edge digital systems. All major variations of this vehicle are present in War Thunder, from early prototypes to modern tanks that are still in use around the globe. Let's start from the beginning, though. During the late 1960s, the American military started to contemplate replacing the M48 and the M60 that were quickly becoming obsolete. First, there was a plan to have a new modern tank through a joint American-German project called the MBT-70. Due to a number of reasons, that initiative fell flat. Germans continued to work on the tank on their own, eventually producing the Leopard 2, while the American side redirected the funds to create a new tank from scratch. The new vehicle had to have a 1,500 horsepower engine a weight of around 54 tons, and a turret design that would allow the use of several different calibers so that the new MBT could be outfitted with both a conventional 105mm rifled gun and a promising German 120mm cannon. At some point, a 110mm gun was also suggested, but the idea was soon dropped as it didn't offer sufficient advantages over the 105mm gun. There were two main parties competing for the contract, General Motors and Chrysler. In 1976, their prototypes were handed over to the US Army for trials. The team at General Motors drew from the experience of their British counterparts that worked on Chobham armor. The turret of their XM1 is thus very reminiscent of the Chobham designs, and its armor incorporates familiar honeycomb-like structures capable of breaking up the molten metal jet that comprised a shape charge explosive. Still, survivability is not the tank's strongest suit. But there were some interesting design choices made. For instance, the tank's armor rack is placed in the rear, and there are 40 millimeters of steel separating it from the crew which can sometimes save their lives when things go south. The XM1 is equipped with a 1,500 horsepower engine, just as specified in the contract, and this engine outputs enough power to allow the tank to reach a speed of up to 50 kph, even when going off-road. 105mm APF SDS rounds at your disposal don't always have high enough penetration rates to pierce the defenses of contemporary tanks. But what the XM1 lacks in penetration, it makes up for in the mobility department. This is a perfect vehicle for lightning-quick assaults, best used at medium range. The General Motors prototype is a rank 6 vehicle of the American tech tree, sitting at BR 9.0. This is a premium tank armed with a 105mm M68 gun with excellent depression and elevation from minus 10 degrees to plus 15 degrees. A high-tech fire control system, thermal sights, and a two-plane stabilizer allow you to land your shots whatever the conditions. The Chrysler-made XM1 shared a lot of similarities with its rival. Both vehicles were equipped with a Nera. Both had 105mm guns and 1,500 horsepower engines. There were many differences, though. The Chrysler team had a different approach to designing the undercarriage and the fuel tank placement. They also gave the vehicle a Honeywell gas turbine instead of a Teledyne Continental diesel engine. In War Thunder, this vehicle is an Xbox One exclusive. It is also the vehicle that won its company the right to develop the M1. The first production M1 Abrams left the factory floor in 1980. It was named after General Crichton Abrams, a West Point graduate who, at one point in his career, commanded American military operations in the Vietnam War. He was honored with not one, but two Distinguished Service Crosses, 
That's the second highest military award that can be given to a member of the United States Army, by the way. In the game, the M1 Abrams sits at BR 10.0. It has considerably better protection than the preceding prototype vehicles. Nearer armor plates covering the front of the hull and the turret can stop many heat projectiles coming your way. But there is more to the Abrams' survivability than just that. Fuel tanks in the front of the hull were placed in armored containers, and there is additional armor covering the engine and the transmission in the back, limiting the damage potential of shots that achieve penetration. Keep in mind, though, that the area directly under the turret, as well as the upper glacy plate, are very vulnerable. Even a single shot penetrating there will likely result in the incapacitation of your vehicle. In all other respects, the Abrams is pretty much like the XM-1, a very agile vehicle that benefits from staying mobile, the only difference being that it can also engage in CQC thanks to a few changes in the design. In 1984, the M1 was given a series of minor upgrades and modifications. This model was called the M1 IP, in which the IP stands for Improved Performance. Among other things, it had an upgraded turret with a thicker frontal armor, giving it up to 1,000 millimeters of protection against heat projectiles and making it a very tough target, even for some ATGMs. A year later, a new major upgrade was introduced the M1A1. It was finally fitted with a more modern gun, something that the team behind the project considered doing since the prototype stage. A new 120mm smoothbore gun will often allow you to finish your duels with a single shot, and its APFSDS rounds with a depleted uranium penetrator can reliably penetrate Soviet MBTs even from the front. Right now, this tank sits at BR 10.3. Finally, in 1992, after the end of the Cold War, a new breed of the Abrams series entered service. We're talking about the M1A2, the latest production model of the series that can be found in the American tech tree. This MBT is outfitted with even better quality composite armor. Its turret can withstand some hits with even the most advanced APFSDS rounds. The tank also has access to a versatile heat FS shell that is effective against both ground and air targets, especially helicopters, thanks to its proximity detonation capabilities. Apart from the American military, the M1A2 is also currently used by the Egyptian armed forces as well as several other countries. Even facing all the challenges of the modern battlefield, it is still a very capable tank. And given the fact that it is still being heavily modified, we're pretty sure that the Abrams is here to stay. <laughs>